What's up nieces and nephews? Welcome to the first video in a series of videos where we talk about everything to do with the business of being a handyman. How to make big money from a small handyman business. This is gonna be based on my experience. It's gonna be led by the questions that you guys ask and the interactions that I receive from you guys is gonna lead the direction of this channel because I'm here to support you guys so that you guys can learn from my experience, right? And what better place to start with how I transitioned into being a handyman. So let's go back to what I was doing before I was a handyman. I had a kitchen remodeling business or kitchen cabinet business originally. And the way that that functioned is there was a business with a store and, and you know, uh, kitchen mock-ups and stuff like that. And customers would come in. And the plan was that I would do the, do the sales and the installations. And eventually I would get people to do the installations and I would just take care of sales and running the business. Well, what ended up happening was that customers would come in and, hey, do you do floors? Do you do painting? So on and so forth. Turns out that customers want somebody that can take care of everything rather than six or 10 people just to save a few dollars doing everything uh, separately, right? So I started to venture into the remodeling business as well completely. So whether that was uh, flooring, paint, uh, carpentry, uh, framing, Pretty much anything and everything to do with remodeling, I did. The funny thing about that is <clears throat> during that time, if I was doing a remodel at a customer's house, while we were outside working, I would have neighbors come and say, hey, my faucet's not working correctly. Could you fix that? Um, my shower is uh, dripping, right? There's a the little bit of a drip when I close the handle. My garbage disposal isn't working. My toilet, blah, blah, blah. Is that something that you can help me with? And I would always turn those things down and I would say, you know what, that's not really what I do. <clears throat> Excuse me, in my mind, that was too small for me. So eventually, you know, the business kept going and we started noticing that we really didn't need a storefront because the customers would simply just come in to make an appointment to view the cabinet samples or the flooring samples or whatever in their space, which is the best way to go about it. Because you don't really know how something's going to look until you have it in your space with your lighting and your decor, etc. So... That went on for a while, and then uh, eventually I realized that, you know, the cabinet business is saturated, and we'll talk about whether that really matters or not, um, because my thought process then, based on my experience now, is way different, right? So, but the point was, we weren't making what we were expecting to make, and because the business always led to the customer's home, the first step was to close down the actual physical brick and mortar business because we didn't have any use for it. Customers really wouldn't go there. We would always just go to the customer's house. Lead down a couple of years of remodeling and trying to run your own crew and all that kind of stuff and the headaches and that's basically your your babysitting. Um, I decided that I no longer wanted to be in sales because my thought process was how many times am I going to remodel your kitchen? How many times am I going to install tile flooring in your house, right? Those kinds of things to me equated to, I always have to be chasing a new customer. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to always be chasing a new customer. So basically what I did was I stopped the remodeling and then I started taking on, just because of simple need at that time, of the small projects. As a matter of fact, the first official paid hand job that I did as a handyman was for a neighbor, which was a referral from my neighbor. She called me up one day and she said, hey, my neighbor, my friend down the street uh, needs some fence posts changed out, blah, blah, blah. Is that something that you do? My gut reaction, as it was before, is to say no, right? In my mind, that's not something that I do. That's too small etc. But then I realized that in the in the interim between closing down the, the business and stop me stopping to look for remodeling uh, projects, there was no money coming in. If if you're not if you're self employed, and you're not taking on projects, and you're bleeding money and nothing's coming in. I had taken a job working uh, with other people getting paid by the day. Now, getting paid by the day is rough, especially in the trades, because you're 
giving your skills and talent, your time, and you're breaking down your body uh, to make somebody else's dream come true. So when my neighbor, Jerry, called me to tell me about her neighbor that needed defense, my automatic reaction was almost to say, you know what, that's not what I take on. But then what I stopped and said to myself is, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm thinking about this uh, completely the wrong way. My current situation right now is I am be- getting paid by the day to further somebody else's business. That's that's completely where I do not need to be. This isn't me. I don't work for people. If I can, at least from that referral that's just down the street, make what I get paid in a day or if not more and in less hours with less, you know, breakdown of my body, let's give this a shot. And that was the first job that I did. And I did that job the very next day. In a few hours, I made triple what I was getting paid in a day. And then I started to, to, I sat back and I said, hmm, handyman. Okay, well, let's, let's, let let me think through this. And more importantly, let's give this a shot. Because at that point, I was just working to survive, right? And I was experimenting with the whole handyman situation. It turns out that as a handyman, once you're in it a few years, and we'll talk about that in other videos, how long does it normally take for you to uh, get enough people that you have a reoccurring business? And that was the thing that I had never really thought of as a remodeling contractor, that handymen didn't make good money. What I didn't realize is that the thought came was like my barber. Once you find a barber that you like, you don't change barbers. That's where you keep going. I tend to have the same barbers for years. And the only reason that I get another barber is because they moved, I moved, you know, something like that. And then I have to, oh my God, I have to find a new barber, which means trying out different people until I get somebody who cuts my hair exactly the way that I like it. But once you find one, you stick to it. That was the light bulb in my head. And then it was reinforced by, well, right now, if I can make more than what I'm making in less hours, and these people are going to keep calling me back, all I have to do is an investment of time to build up my client portfolio of customers that require handymen. Boom, I started doing that. And that, in fact, was exactly what happened. You get reoccurring calls from the same customer. You work less hours in the day. The stress and the responsibility of projects are at the most a few days. If that's what you choose to do, because you can always choose not to work or not to take projects that are very long. The wear and tear on my body is less. And again, more than anything was people keep calling you. People keep calling you. And I don't have to keep chasing new customers. I mean, you do and you don't. And we'll talk about again. We'll talk about the fluctuations that happen because you really do have stages in your business where you outgrow certain customers as you start to expand into a new customer base, right? And we'll talk about those kinds of things. But that was my epiphany. That's where I started as a handyman. I had all the tools. I had all the skills. And to be quite honest with you, as a remodeling contractor, Uh, doing handyman work, it it was pretty easy, especially the mental load and the mental responsibility of doing those kinds of projects was so much of a mental relief that um, I was just like, you know what, I'm I'm on the right track here, I'm going to keep going. So that that's my journey as to how I started uh, in the handyman business, right? So this channel is going to be completely led in the direction by you guys. I do have ideas about what I'm going to do in the video series about step by step about, you know, the next one is going to be is the market too saturated. So take a look at that video, right? Um, Should you become a handyman? uh, Choosing your clients, uh, pricing, where to find uh, clients, etc. But this is also going to be led by the questions that you guys ask, I'm going to respond to every single comment that you guys leave. And I'm here for you. I'm here to quote unquote mentor you guys 
directly from the uh, comments that you guys make and that's going to lead the direction in the videos that I make in the direction of the channels. So use me as a resource guys. You know, I hope this was helpful and um, I hope that you learn and I hope that we establish a great relationship guys and I'll see you on the next one.